As a crane operator on an offshore rig, you have a lot of responsibility. Lifting loads in high winds and rough seas can be tricky and dangerous. For you to do a good job, your crane has to be in top condition. If your crane isn't maintained, it's going to let you down, and that's going to make you look bad. Keep your crane in good running order. We'll show you the areas that you need to watch out for, as well as the regular lubrication and inspection points. Most of our rigs have national cranes, and that's what this program will concentrate on. However, if the type of crane you operate is not a national, you should still watch this program because most of the things we'll talk about apply to all cranes. In the workbook furnished with this program, you'll find some checklist forms. Use them as you go about your regular inspections. It'll help you remember the various checks as well as the order to do them in. There's a space on the form to make notes or comments as well. When you're done with your checklist, you'll want to file it somewhere so that you can keep a record of the maintenance tasks you've done. The safety and performance checks you do on your crane are divided into daily, weekly, and monthly checks. We'll cover the daily ones first. These checks should be done every day before you operate your crane. Remember, if you see a problem that you can't handle, inform your supervisor so he can get it taken care of. Small problems can magnify and become larger, so take care of problems as soon as you detect them. Okay, let's get started with our daily checks. Before you climb into the crane, you'll want to visually inspect it for damage. Make sure all lines are tight and secure. You need to check the air regulator, which is usually mounted on the pedestal to see if it's in proper operating range from 90 to 140 pounds per square inch. Now, go on up to the cab where we'll start our engine checks. Look around your cab and engine compartments. Are they clean? Rick Allen, operator of the Clyde Crane on the MSV Theros, has some thoughts on cleanliness. Well, I've been driving cranes about seven years offshore, and one of the best things I've found is always keep your crane clean. That way you can see for oil leaks, for fractures in like, uh, for instance, a sheave, if it's kept clean, uh, it's safe practice to me. I mean, I don't like li living in dirt. I don't think a lot of other people do so. But if you keep your crane nice and clean, it's safe. That way you can see any faults in the crane, you can spot them immediately. If it's covered in grease, covered in dirt, you ain't gonna find it until it's too late. So right, Ricky. We can't overemphasize that point enough. You'll especially want to check in the engine compartment for any spilled fuel or oil, which could make for a real fire hazard. Okay, first off, check the fuel level by looking in the sight glass to see how full it is. You should make a habit of keeping the tank as full as possible because it'll keep moisture from condensing in the tank. Now move around to the engine and check the oil level. Fill it if necessary. You should be aware of the number of hours on the air filters, fuel, and oil filters. Air filters, uh, check for contamination, sump drops down for access, and they should be, they should last about 1500 hours normal running. Okay, these are the fuel filters. Again, just check for contamination. They should run minimum 1,000 hours under normal, normal wear. Uh, oil filters at the front here. Again, regularly monitored and changed out as necessary. About the same running time. The next check will be the hydraulic oil tank. Look in the sight glass and if the level is low, fill it. There's one more check you need to make back here and it's important. These two boom foot bushings need to be lubricated every day. They make the boom operate easier and keep the hinges from becoming galled. Okay. Now we're ready to go into the cab and start the engine. Let it warm up at idle speeds. 
check your oil pressure and engine temperature gauges. Rev your engine up to 1800 RPM and check the clutch for proper operation by engaging and disengaging it. After doing this, leave it engaged and let the hydraulic fluid reach its normal operating temp. While it's warming up, move back into the engine compartment and check the pump pressure gauges. They should both show 250 PSI. The one on the left is for the boom hoist. The one on the right is for the main whip hoist. Look over at the triple pump drive lube oil gauge to see if it's at about 20 to 40 PSI at 1800 RPM. The pump suction line filter is a go-no-go -no -go gauge. See if it shows in the green section. Okay, back in the cab, look at your control pressure gauge. It should register around 700 to 750 PSI. Take a look at the gauges, lights and controls on your panel. Everything should be operating properly. You'll want to check the brake off lights as well. First on your whip line, then switch over and check your main hoist. Hit the swing brake switch to make sure the light comes on and then check the boom hoist control to be sure its light goes on. Another brake that's real important is your emergency brake. When you hit that button, your load should stop at once. You sure don't want to be the one in the cab if this hook ever goes out of control. All of our newer rigs have a digital load and weight indicator. If you have one, check it by pressing the test button. All the indicators should light up. Don't forget to check your horn. It could get you out of a dangerous situation. Lastly, operate your swing boom and hoist control handles for proper centering when released. If they don't come back to center, they'll need to be adjusted. Well, that does it for your daily checks. It may seem like a lot to do, but after a while, it'll become automatic. If you find any problems as you make these checks, write them down on your checklist and make sure you inform the proper person who can remedy the problem. Now for the weekly checks. You'll be doing a lot more lubrication and inspection of the boom, gantry, and engine. First off is the grease fittings that you need to lubricate. We're going to show you where all of them are, but of course you do not need to do them in the same order. You can fit them in wherever you want along with your other weekly checks. First is the swing bearing and swing pinion, which are located in the frame wall beside the hydraulic tank. There are seven points here. Next is the lock pawl pin. Then three fittings on the triple pump drive clutch. If you have a cat engine, then there's a grease point on the radiator fan shiv bearing. And if you have a GM engine, then there are two points on the air throttle actuator. Up on the gantry, you have one point to grease on the center turn shiv. And four points on the shivs on the gantry. The floating block has five grease fittings and each of the turn shivs has one. The extension shiv has one, as well as the main load shivs. Finally, both the main block and the auxiliary block have several points that you'll need to grease. Depending on what type of crane you have, you could have additional points, so you might need to add some more to this list. We'll continue our weekly checks in the engine compartment. Check the oil levels of all the shaft assemblies, swing gear housing, triple pump drive, and airline lubricator, topping them off if necessary. While you're checking these levels, inspect the hydraulic systems for any sign of leakage or deterioration of components. You'll also need to check the brakes for adjustment and excessive wear of the lining. 
Check his well for contamination by lubricants. Now climb up on the roof of the crane and check the water level, filling it if necessary. Walk around to the rear gantry leg pins and look for missing or dislocated cutter pins. The next series of checks you'll need to make concerns your wire rope. It is the single most important part of your crane and can be subject to much wear and abuse. Salt water can contribute to early wear on your wire rope as well. To check your wire rope, you'll need to have someone in the cab who can slowly spool the lines in and out. As this is done, check the wire for any signs of wear. What are you looking for? Crushed wires. Broken wires. Kinks. Rust and the like. You should watch the SEDCO program, Drilling Line, Care and Maintenance, Part 1, which you have in your videotape library. It'll give you examples of damaged wire rope and tell you what you can live with as far as damage goes. Drilling lines. Remember, you want to get a good look at all your running rope. It's going to take a while, but can save you in the long run. As you observe your wire, check to make sure that all the drums are spooling properly. The wire rope should spool evenly without crossing the wires. The boom hoist has a lock pawl that engages with the ratchet teeth. Have someone in the cab move the boom hoist control in either direction, which will cause the lock pawl to disengage. When the control handle is returned to center, the lock pawl should re-engage with the ratchet teeth. Now you're done with the checks on the top of the cab. Next, you need to check the operation of your boom angle limiter switch. This switch prevents the boom from being raised or lowered at too great an angle. Usually, the maximum allowable load angle of the boom is 80 degrees, while the lowest allowable load angle is zero degrees. Most cranes have a limiter on the foot of the boom which will return the control handle to center when the maximum position is reached. You need to check whatever type of system you have. The boom saver is a mechanism installed on the crane that prevents you from running a block into the point shivs. To check out the boom saver, you'll need to spool in each of the blocks until they reach the limit switches. At the point they contact the switch, your control handle will be forced back to the neutral position. This should be tested on both the main and whip hoist. The last of your weekly checks is mostly housekeeping. Check all the controls, lights, and indicators to be sure they're operating properly. Look at the electrical wires and connections for signs of deterioration or malfunction. Check the valve solenoids as well. Everything should have its place and be in order. That does it for the weekly checks. The monthly checks cover mostly wear points throughout your crane. You'll need to set aside some time to do these monthly checks, as they will take a while. Have another crane operator or one of the roustabouts help you. Starting in the engine compartment, take the cover off the triple pump chain drive and check for excessive stretch. Also, look at the chain sprockets for wear. And if they're okay, replace the cover. Check for loose bolts on the hydraulic pumps, motors, swing bearing, swing gear reducer, and shaft assemblies. In the cab, inspect the load angle and weight indicator system over the full range for significant inaccuracies. If your cranes do not have a digital readout, then inspect the mechanical indicators. Now grab your grease gun and climb up the gantry. You'll be looking for deformed, cracked, or corroded members on your way up. When you get to the top, grease all the points we told you about when we talked about lubricants. At the same time, check the wire rope, pendants, and connections for deterioration. For this next series of checks, you'll need to lay the boom down on something like the helideck. 
don't pick a real windy day to do this because you're going to have to walk down the boom to check the cross members and structure for defects. If you see something like this, a bent member, bring it to the attention of your supervisor. Something like this weakens the structural integrity of your boom and it should be replaced at once. Also, as you walk the boom, inspect the boom pins that join the sections together. Check the wire rope and pendant lines as well for signs of deterioration, such as reduction of rope diameter, broken or worn outside wires, or corroded and cracked connections. Look as well for severe kinking, crushing, or unstranding of wires. You really need to check this area out carefully, for it's not often that you get this close to it. Using this wear gauge, you'll need to check the shivs for excessive wear. Insert the gauge into the shiv and see if it's worn much more than the gauge indicates. If it has, make note of it. While you're looking at the shivs, inspect for cracks. Make note of anything unusual that you see. When you're done inspecting on the boom, look at your main and whip block and hook. You're looking for cracks or deterioration. Check the hooks and connections carefully. Well, that about does it for your monthly checks. Remember, anything out of the ordinary, you should report to the rig superintendent or tool pusher. Make all your notes on your checklist and be sure to tell the tool pusher of your results. You might need to add on to what we've shown you, depending on the crane you have, as well as the conditions you use it under. The instruction manual can probably be helpful in answering some of your questions. It's a good idea not to attempt to make repairs on something you can't handle. Call your rig electrician or mechanic to take care of those problems. That's what they're there for. Doing these checks regularly will assure you that your crane is being kept up to its peak operating condition. Just as important, it will operate within safe limits. You can then